Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you five ways to make your piano chords sound better. Now these are the tips I used to write the music that was featured on trailers like Double Lover, Mary Queen of Scots and Goodbye Christopher Robin. Now if you wait till the end you can hear my favourite tip of all, which I use regularly on all of my piano works, well, at least a great deal of these piano works that I write for trailers. Uh, don't forget to click subscribe to my channel for more trailer music tips. Okay, so we're talking uh, making your piano chords sound better. Okay, so um, for these chords examples, I'm going to be using uh, a really uh, very well used chord progression that is the first chord, the minor sixth chord, the fourth chord, and the fifth chord. So in C, it would be... C, A minor, F, G. Okay, so I'm going to use that example throughout all of these just so you can hear how we can expand upon it. Um, now, for any of you who uh, know my output, then you know that piano writing is a huge part of it. Uh, and I just love writing the piano, uh, not because I'm a pianist, I am a guitarist by nature, um, by nature, by training, I guess. Uh, but I just love how immediately cinematic the piano is. And and also, it doesn't have any reference. So, you know, sometimes when I hear a guitar, I think, cheesy, you know, treat cheesy rock. Or, you know, it, it has a, a reference point to me. Um, you know, if you use a flanger, I think, ah, oh, 90s rock. If you're, you know, using delay, I'm thinking, ah, oh, you too. Uh, whereas piano, I don't immediately go, oh, Coldplay. Uh, I just go, mm, yeah, piano. Uh, and that's why I love the piano, because it, it, it has a neutral palette. And that's why you can use it in so many situations. That's why it's so big in trailer music, because it has, you know, it, it is used to carry harmony and melody without any reference to geography or history or anything like that. So let's dive in. Uh, my first way to utilize, uh, to improve your piano writing is to use different voicings. Okay, so most of us who aren't trained on the piano, like myself, uh, if you can play the piano at all, that is, uh, would go straight in for the one, three, five chord voicing. Uh, which is fine, and I still use that all the time. Uh, but if I want to make it sound better or more pianistic, then what I would do is I'd spread the voicing out. And this is what you would do when you orchestrate your piano parts as well. You spread the voicings out. Um, so say I'm in C, uh, the voicing, the one, three, vo five voicing would be C, E, and G, right? Uh, so I'm gonna, the voicings I'm going to use for this example are going to be the first and the fifth in my left, ha left hand. That's C and G. And then I'm going to use the third and the first in my right hand. So I've actually got a fifth in my left hand and a sixth in my right hand. So let's have a comp direct comparison. So this is... Uh, the sort of stand one three five, and then this is the one five three one. So you can hear immediately; it's, it's already a fuller sound because it's spanning two octaves, which is uh, which is awesome. Um, but also, the wonderful thing about it is that it enables you to play melodies with your hands, or obviously uh, to play melodies with your right hand whilst also voicing the important tones of the chord, which are, well, most important, one and three, so that we know the tonality of the chord. The fifth isn't so important. And then I can jump into seventh chords, sixth chords, and then back to the C. Uh, and it's just fantastic. So if I've got uh, this, say, the one, six, four, five, I could have it like this. One, Six, four, five, which lends itself to um, more lyrical writing, which is which is why this one is really important. And if you keep watching this video, uh, I will get to my favourite one and one that I use all the time for cinematic style piano writing. Um, so there we go. So that's, I mean, that this one, the first one is kind of a broad thing to explore voicings, uh, but specifically explore the 153 voicing. Uh, so I'm looking for my 
There it is, my foot pedal. Um, so if you play around with it, you don't need to have the octave at the top, so it can just be one, five, three. It's lovely. It's just it's a really nice way to start exploring chords um, and specifically exploring voicings and also expanding your piano writing. Okay, let's move on to number two, which is something I, uh, well, in fact, any composer uh, uses on a regular basis to create the uh, tension resolve thing. Okay, um, so for those of you who, who aren't uh, in the know, music is all about tension and resolve. So that's everything we do when we're writing music. We create tension and we resolve it. We create tension and resolve it. Sometimes we don't even resolve it. And sometimes the tension is very minimal, but that's why chord progressions work because you start, hmm, this is nice, but then the, hmm, the minor chord creates a bit of tension. And then, okay, that's kind of a resolved a little bit. And I've got a little bit of tension there. Ah, the business. Um, and it's 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 a lot more obvious when you can kind of you can hear the tension uh, kind of, uh, and that's the thing. But so what you don't want to want to do is start listening out from music, mm. listening out to music, and thinking how are they using tension and resolve to kind of keep me listening. And that's what we're doing here. We're gonna be using suspensions. Um, so what that means is in a chord of one, three, five, uh, we are taking out the three and replacing it with either a two or a four. So this would be our C. Nice. And then if we add suspensions, it would be one, two, five, or one, four, five. So what you can do is you can create a tension and resolve with just a C. So you go so to a suspended second, suspended fourth. Nice. So immediately, um, you know, I'm a huge, I can't find this pedal. Ah, there it is. Immediately, uh, you've got this wonderful sounds from just one chord essentially I mean it's a C chord it's just you're you're adding suspensions in so if I just explore this so in my left hand I'm playing the one five that's the C and the G A E F C and G D and in my right hand I'm going to explore suspensions. So I'm still at, I'm actually around the one, three, five, but instead of three, it will be one, two, five. Okay. So listen now, they, they don't all work uh, in the in the manner that you would want them to, uh, and that's why you hear certain suspensions more often than not. Uh, I you hear suspension in the first in the first chord and suspensions in the fifth chord. because it, it adds another level of tension that you can resolve. So with a, for instance, with a fifth, tension to resolve into the fifth chord, which then resolves even more into the root chord. It's, it's a very, uh, very clever way of expanding or extending the length of tension that you have within your chord sequence. So, I mean, I could use it like this. I've got my C chord, my first chord, my sixth chord, my fourth chord, and then I could go my fifth chord with a suspension, resolve it to a fifth chord without a suspension, back to my root. Let's take that a bit further. Root, that's my C, my A minor, fourth chord with a suspension, resolve that, fifth chord with a suspension, resolve that, back to the root. Now when I say resolve, what I mean is I'm taking the fourth note of that chord, so for instance, fourth or second, so for instance with the F, I'm going, I'm playing as a suspended second, so I'm resolving it to an F, a sharp 11, 
back to its third, and that's what it's, what's what you're doing when you're resolving. Okay. Um, now, if I had the time, I would have set up another camera here so you could watch what my hands are doing. But to be honest, I don't think that would have helped you because it would have looked like someone playing the piano badly. Um, anyway, let's move on. Uh, so let's add some more suspensions in. So I'm going to add in a suspension to my first chord. Suspension to my fourth, uh, and no suspension to my sixth. Suspension to my fourth. Resolve. There we go. So you can resolve them nicely, which is uh, really good. Now let's explore using uh, a suspension with the sixth chord and see how that sounds. Suspension. Suspension. So that was nice. So noticeably, I chose the suspended fourth for the sixth chord. So that would be uh, A, D, and E. There we go. So if, let's try it with a suspended second. So the suspended seconds work really nicely, and uh, those of you who are big fans of the band Foo Fighters or Placebo, you will recognise what's going on there, um, because those bands, Placebo and uh, Foo Fighters, use ninth chords a lot, which would be, um, on guitar, it's actually uh, played a uh, in fifths, uh, so it would be like, uh, where am I? C, G, D. So it's still a second chord, a it's still a suspension because you don't have the third, but uh, there we go. So it'd be an added ninth, that is. I, sh I should have clarified that. So in guitar, you'd call it an add nine or whatever, uh, but we're, it's, it's a suspended chord. So you've got the fifth, first, fifth, and then you've got the essentially the second, but it's actually the ninth degree because of where it is on the scale. And then I can go, oops. And then. Okay, um, I was obviously getting distracted by how uh, it, it's, I felt like I was going to start playing ever long on the uh, piano. Um, so let's move on to the number three, um, which is one of the ways to make your piano chords sound better. Um, and specifically, uh, this one is like how to make your writing sound more like a piano player who actually writes for the piano rather than a music producer who has a one octave keyboard and lots of beat pads. Um, admittedly, I don't have a one octave keyboard. I have one to, I have to count this, three, four, four and a bit, maybe five. Um, and it's old and it's broken and the keys have turned yellow because it's so old. But by using this trick, you can make your piano chords sound better. We've already started exploring this. Uh, and this is taking, uh, it's kind of, um, for this I might change the piano sample I'm using just because this it was work quite so nicely with the sample. Uh, it's kind of like, if you start using this, you can automatically uh, hear how Ludovico Einaudi writes his piano pieces. You go, oh, that's how he does it. Of course. And then you start hearing it all over the place. All those TV ads with, with piano, all those uh, tra drama trailers with piano. You just hear this all the time. And it is essentially power chords in your left hand. So that is your first, fifth, and your octave, fifth chords in your left hand. Okay, so for this I'm just going to load up a... crazy loud instance of Alicia Keys. Uh, let's just switch it to... a different preset. Okay, so here we go. And specifically, when you've got this, so if I'm, I'm just going to go through the chord sequence and then I'm going to talk about how you can use it and how you can make your piano chords sound better by util utilising this. So we've got our, uh, our C, our A minor, our 
our F and our G. Now, now I'm going to start playing an inversion in my right hand. Okay, so I've got, so I've got the C, the A minor, the F, the G, G7. Okay, um, now let's make this sound like a piano player is playing this. I'm rocking up and down between the first, fifth, and octave. So I go first, fifth, octave, fifth, octave, fifth, octave, fifth. Um, so let's just, I'll go through the sequence. Just my left hand. So you can read it here. Oh wait a second, this, this guy's a piano player. No, I'm not. Well, I suppose I can play, but here we go. So let's just play around with... Oh, badly played piano. Let's play around with it a little bit. Okay, so all I was doing with my right hand was playing notes of the chord. So, G, E, that's for the C. A, E, A, F, and then F, D, C, B, C, B, D, 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 um, Which, if you start to explore this, you can really have a lot of fun at making your piano, sound, piano chords sound that much more interesting. So I'm just doing the same in both hands, rocking between the first, fifth. So it's, you can see immediately, oh, wait a second, this. Just play around with power chords, with fifth chords, all of a sudden this sounds so much better, sounds so much more cinematic, so much more like a piano player is playing it, and it's, it's so cool. Uh, and I use it all the time. Anytime you hear me doing some big uh, piano-based trailer music, you can guarantee there is some guy, probably me, playing that at some point, usually. an octave further down, because then you've got the, the weight of the piano and it sounds awesome. Right, now let's move on to number four. Okay, again, this is a trick to make my piano chords sound better that I use all the time. And it's kind of a, it's kind of like an amalgamation of a few of these points already. Um, and it's a very, very good way to start taking your piano playing and turn it into string writing. So you take this idea, which is using ostinatos layered over the top of your chords. So you're actually playing extended chords. So for instance, if I if I was to play the ostinato based around a C, D, and E, I'm actually playing an added nine chord. Uh, and again, if I was to add in that F chord, C9 slash 11, um, I'm just making these the extended chords, and you can take this ostinato that you write, and you put it in the strings. And it just immediately, you go, hey, wait, this guy knows how to write for strings. Uh, all I'm doing is taking the ostinato I wrote on the piano and putting it into, giving it to the strings, which, you know, uh, I talk about in some of my other videos, uh, taking your piano sketch and giving it to the orchestra. So, you know, it kind of demystifying the ideas of orchestration, because, you know, orchestration, like mastering and mixing, is one of those words that we hear and go, ah, I don't know how to do it. Uh, it can be a lot simpler than you think. Obviously, there are huge layers to orchestration that uh, I'm not even going to pretend to say I know. Uh, anyway, I, I digress. 
Let's go back to this. Using ostinatos to make your piano chords sound better. Here we go. So I, I'm going to, again, same chord sequence. I'm going to use this ostinato, which is a, a C and an E and a C and a D. So you can hear that immediately, just this little ostinato idea, which in itself sounds pretty cool, um, has taken those chord sequences and made them sound better, made, they made those chords sound better. I mean, they're essentially, like I said, an extended chord. Um, so what I would like you to do is, is think about uh, how when you hear specifically trailing music and film music how you can hear they've taken an ostinato and they layered it on top of their chords to make those chords sound better and more interesting and that's the trick here is you want your chords to sound more interesting and that's the fun thing about ostinatos is they kind of create this tension and resolve themselves then you add the tension and resolve of the chords. And it just, it just, it's lovely. Okay, and on to my fifth and final tip. And one of my favorites uh, for making your chords sound better. And again, this is exploring voicings. So what we've got here is we've got a C chord, an A minor chord, F chord, G chord. Now what happens if we add the seventh degree? We have C major seven. Okay, follow me. A minor seven. F major seven. G dominant seven. So what we have there is one, three, five, seven. Okay, one, three, five, seven. But what I'm going to do is, I mean, that sounds nice in and of itself because already this it's got these lovely, interesting qualities to it that the seventh degree brings. Uh, but what happens if we ex take the voicings and change them? And in this video, I've been working a lot with my left hand playing the first and the fifth. And I'm going to take that and say, okay, what happens if my right hand plays a fifth, but instead of playing... C and G, the first and the fifth. It plays the third and the seventh. Okay, so let's play through the chord sequence. I'm going to play through it first. Both of my hands playing the first and the fifth. So I'm essentially moving in the demonic parallel fifths. Okay. Let's try first, fifth, third, seven. Okay, here we go. Let's try that again without my alarm going off. Can you hear how much more interesting and delicate those chords sound? I mean, they just sound fantastic. And, and when you apply that to string writing, there you have. You have a way to spread your voicings around. Obviously, you're going to make it a little bit more interesting as you started to hear me do it there. So rather than just going in parallel fifths, I would probably explore having... ostinatos or at least 
leading notes and creating a melody with my right hand. Uh, and you can, of course, <laughs> play the wrong chords. You can, of course, break that, so you don't have to always do the 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 seventh chord. You can start with sevenths, seventh, 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 suspension, and that's when you start to take all of the five tips I've shown you uh, and bring them together. And this is the the ultimate tip, the secret sixth tip of using all five things to make your chords sound even better. Um, which are so first one is using the voicing of one five three. The second one is using suspensions. The third one is using power chords in the left hand. The fourth one is using ostinatos. The fifth one is using the sevenths. To create those full and more interesting, those better sounding piano chords. Hey guys, now if you are interested in learning how to write more for piano and specifically for trailers, you can go head on over to the Trailer Music School where I teach courses on how to write trailer music.